Diego Velázquez, who lived from 1599 to 1660, was the court painter of King Philip IV of Spain. He played an essential role in presenting Philip as a powerful leader. Velázquez's position enabled him to achieve a level of recognition never before accorded to a painter in Spain. The artist's great masterpiece, Las Meninas, translated as The Maids of Honor, was painted in 1656. Although in this work Velázquez places the Princess Margarita center stage, the title refers to her ladies-in-waiting, her Meninas. Velázquez himself can be seen painting, and participating in everyday life at court. A careful analysis of the painting also reveals how the artist used it to enhance his social status and the nobility of the art of painting. The arrangement of the figures in the foreground creates an implied line. This rhythmic line guides the viewer's eye through the painting and introduces the characters. It also creates variety and movement in the composition. Stability and unity are created in the background by the strict vertical and horizontal lines of the framed objects and the door. There are three sources of light in Las Meninas. One source casts a shadow under Margarita's skirt. A second light source comes from a window on the right. It illuminates Margarita's face and casts shadows on the faces of her attendants. A third source of light is the door opened by Don José Nieto, a royal assistant and confidant of the Queen. Velázquez created a spectrum of warm and cool color combinations with different values of grays and browns. He used red-orange to direct the viewer to look at important areas. Las Meninas was painted with oils and finished with a varnish. This gives the painting a very smooth surface. The painter's brush strokes create implied texture as shown in the satin of the ladies' dresses and the illusionistic fur of the dog. His brush strokes are thick and quick for lace and ribbons. He used smoother lines and thinner paint for the faces. Standing close to the canvas, one can see the separate brush strokes, which merge into a recognizable image when viewed from a distance. Velázquez's technique would be greatly admired by Impressionist painters in the late 19th century. The arrangement of the figures in Las Meninas is very complex. Center stage is the princess, Margarita, with her Meninas. This grouping creates a central triangle. Another triangle is created by a female dwarf, a young dwarf, and a dog. The female dwarf stands proudly, looking directly at the viewer. The younger dwarf looks down, placing a foot on the sleepy mastiff and guiding the viewer's eye. Three well-lit points of interest form another equilateral triangle, the highlight on Margarita's face, the doorway, and the light reflecting off the mirror. Two rectangles on the rear wall frame paintings of scenes from Ovid's Metamorphoses by Peter Paul Rubens. It is important to note that these are hanging above the two workers of the court, Velázquez and Nieto. The two canvases and the mirror create another triangle when linked. Velázquez uses linear perspective to create depth and space in Las Meninas. The black frames on the right wall and the ceiling hooks guide the viewer's eye towards the vanishing point. The mirror, reflecting the king and queen, suggests a continuation of space beyond the painting. Art historians debate whether the reflection indicates the presence of the king and the queen in the room. Or does the mirror reflect a portrait on Velázquez's canvas? A recreation of the perspective of the room suggests that the mirror must reflect something to the viewer's left. There is other evidence that the royal couple may be posing for their portrait. The reactions of the characters in the work convey a sense of arrested motion, as if someone has just entered the room. The figures show signs of respect. Margarita pauses, and even the dog seems to bow his head. 
The presence of the Queen's escort, Nieto, also suggests that the royal couple is in the room. Nieto appears to be opening the door and beckoning to the Queen. However, there are no records of a complete portrait of the King and Queen on a canvas this large. Other possibilities have been suggested. Velasquez may, in fact, be painting the princess, as Margarita does seem to be posing and perhaps even looking at herself in a mirror in front of Velasquez. The size of the canvas, however, again seems inappropriate for a portrait. Las Meninas measures ten and a half feet tall by nine feet wide. An analysis of the proportions of Las Meninas suggests that the large canvas shown within it is the same size as the painting itself. Scale and proportion enhance the illusion of space in Las Meninas. Velázquez is the tallest of the figures. Presumably, Nieto would have been the next tallest, but he is shown considerably smaller than Velázquez to suggest distance. The overlapping of figures also heightens the impression of depth. Las Meninas is an example of asymmetrical balance in art. The sense of weight is even throughout, but each side of the central axis is not identical. The smaller area of light coming from the right balances the enormous canvas on the left. On the left, Velázquez is large and in the foreground. Nieto is much smaller and located at the vanishing point. Balance to the composition is provided by Nieto's position in front of the light of the doorway. The repetition of elements in a painting often creates a rhythm. For example, the dark picture frames create rhythm through the repetition of line. The repeated triangles in the composition connect the foreground and the background, creating another rhythm. In Las Meninas, Velázquez uses touches of bright red-orange to guide the viewer's eye and also create rhythm. Emphasis, more than any of the other principles of art, can often bring the viewer closest to the artist's intention. This is certainly true of Las Meninas. In this complex composition, Velázquez draws the viewer's attention to several focal points, but the princess is the first figure to be noticed. The artist places her on the central axis, shines the brightest light directly on her, and dresses her in the brightest white. The other characters seem to surround and serve her. Velázquez also draws attention to himself. He has paused to step back from the canvas to look out at the viewer. He stands next to the large canvas and is the tallest figure in the scene. The red cross on his chest is another focal point. It would have been inappropriate for the painter to be in a portrait with the king. Instead, Velázquez places himself in the presence of the princess and subtly suggests the king and queen by placing them in the mirror. Although the princess is the main focal point, the true power is given to the viewer. Six of the characters stare directly out at us. The intended viewer was King Philip IV himself, and there is therefore an air of deference as the characters look out towards the man who was their master, husband, or father. This portrait would have hung in the king's study. Las Meninas also tells us something very personal about Velázquez. One of his greatest desires was to become a member of the knighthood of Santiago. He had many obstacles to overcome. The knighthood would not accept a person who was not of noble blood, nor anybody of Jewish descent. Velázquez may have been descended from nobility on his mother's side, but likely had Jewish blood from his father's family. Although many witnesses were called to swear that Velázquez was of pure blood, the knighthood still refused to accept him as a member because he earned a living from painting, a manual trade. Velázquez needed to prove that painting was a noble, intellectual art and created Las Meninas as evidence. The complexity of the composition, the use of linear perspective, and the intrigue created by the undefined presence of the royal couple all demonstrate that painting was an art of the mind and not just of the hands.
The purpose of Las Meninas was to enhance the status of the artist. The presence of the royal family in his studio endorses the painter's art. Velázquez had attended the ceremony in which King Philip had knighted Rubens in 1631. By including works of Rubens in Las Meninas, Velázquez would have reminded the viewer that painters were eligible for knighthood. The king himself obtained special permission from the Pope in Rome to admit Velázquez to the knighthood of Santiago in 1658. Velázquez died two years later. The cross of the Order of Santiago was added to Las Meninas on the king's orders after Velázquez's death. Legend says the king himself painted the cross.